Lempel Ziv Welch, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This article includes a list of references, related reading, or external links, but its sources remain unclear because it lacks inline citations. Please help to improve this article by introducing more precise citations, August 2017. Learn how and when to remove this template message. Lempel Ziv Welch, LZW, is a universal lossless data compression algorithm created by Abraham Lempel Jacob Ziv and Terry Welch. It was published by Welch in 1984 as an improved implementation of the LZ78 algorithm published by Lempel and Ziv in 1978. The algorithm is simple to implement and has the potential for very high throughput in hardware implementations. It is the algorithm of the widely used Unix file compression utility Compress and is used in the GIF image format. Contents. 1. Algorithm 1.1 Encoding 1.2 Decoding 1.3 Variable Width Codes 1.4 Packing Order 2. Example 2.1 Encoding 2.2 Decoding 3. Further Coding 4. Uses 5. Patents 6. Variants 7. See also 8. References 9. External Links Algorithm the scenario described by Welch's 1984 paper encodes sequences of 8-bit data as fixed-length 12-bit codes. The codes from 0 to 255 represent one-character sequences consisting of the corresponding 8-bit character, and the codes 256 through 4095 are created in a dictionary for sequences encountered in the data as it is encoded. At each stage of compression, input bytes are gathered into a sequence until the next character would make a sequence with no code yet in the dictionary. The code for the sequence without that character is added to the output, and a new code for the sequence with that character is added to the dictionary. The idea was quickly adapted into other situations. In an image-based on a color table, for example, the natural character alphabet is the set of color table indices, and the, in the 1980s many images had small color tables, on the order of 16 colors. For such a reduced alphabet, the full 12-bit codes yielded poor compression unless the image was large, so the idea of variable width codes was introduced. Codes typically start one bit wider than the symbols being encoded, and as each code size is used up, the code width increases by one bit, up to some prescribed maximum, typically 12 bits. When the maximum code value is reached, encoding proceeds using the existing table, but new codes are not generated for addition, for addition to the table. Further refinements include reserving a code to indicate that the code table should be cleared and restored to its initial state. A clear code, typically the first value immediately after the values for the individual alphabet characters, and a code to indicate the data, indicate the end of data, a stop code, typically one greater than the clear code. The clear code lets the table be reinitialized after it fills up, which lets the encoding adapt to changing patterns in the input data. Smart encoders can monitor the compression efficiency and clear the table whenever the existing table no longer matches the input well. Since codes are added in a manner determined by the data, the decoder mimics building the table as it sees the resulting codes. It is critical that the encoder and decoder agree on the variety of LZW used, the size of the alphabet, the maximum table size, and code width, whether variable width encoding is used, initial code size, and whether to use the clear and stop codes, and what values they have. Most formats that employ LZW build this information into the format specification or provide explicit fields for them in a compression header for the data. Encoding. A high-level view of the encoding algorithm is shown here. 1. Initialize the dictionary to contain all strings of length 1. 2. Find the longest string w in the dictionary that matches the current input. 3. Emit the dictionary index for w to output and remove w from the input. 4. Add w followed by the next symbol in the input to the dictionary. 5. Go to step 2. It's important to note that when they say strings, they don't mean ASCII, they just mean bytes, um, which I'm still getting used to. 
A dictionary is initialized to contain the single character strings corresponding to all the possible input characters, and nothing else except the clear and stop codes if they're being used. The algorithm works by scanning through the input strings for successively longer substrings until it finds one that is not in the dictionary. When such a string is found, the index for the string without the last character, i.e. the longest substring that is in the dictionary, is retrieved from the dictionary and sent to the output. And the new string, including the last character, is added to the dictionary with the next available code. The last input character is then used as the next starting point to scan the substrings. In this way, successively longer strings are registered in the dictionary and available for subsequent encoding as a single output as a, sorry. In this way, successively longer strings are registered in the dictionary and available for subsequent encoding as single output values. The algorithm works best on data with repeated patterns, so the initial parts of the message see little compression. As the message grows, however, the compression ratio tends asymptomatically to the maximum, i.e. the compression factor or ratio improves on an increasing curve and not linearly. Approaching a theoretical maximum inside a limited time period rather than over a infinite time. Decoding. The decoding algorithm works by reading a value from the encoded input and outputting the corresponding string from the initialized dictionary. The next sentence is about to be a run-on sentence, just a warning. To rebuild the dictionary in the same way as it was built during encoding, comma, it also obtains the next value from the input and adds to the dictionary the concatenation of the current string and the first character of the string obtained by decoding the text input value, comma, or the first character of the string just output if the next value cannot be decoded, open paren, if the next value is unknown, to the decoder, comma, then it must be the value added to the dictionary, this iteration, comma, and so its first character must be the same as the first character of the current string being sent to decoded output, close paren, period. The decoder then proceeds to the next input value, open paren, which was already read in as the next value in the previous pass, close paren, and repeats the process until there is no more input, at which point the final input value is decoded without any more additions to the dictionary. In this way, the decoder builds a dictionary that is identical to that used by the encoder and uses it to decode the subsequent input values. Thus, the full dictionary does not need to be sent with the encoded data. Just the initial dictionary that contains the single character strings is sufficient and is typically defined beforehand within the encoder and decoder rather than explicitly sent with the encoded data. Variable width codes. If variable width codes are being used, the encoder and decoder must be careful to change the width at the same points in the encoded data so they don't disagree on the boundaries between individual codes in the stream. In the standard version, the encoder increases the width from P to P plus 1 when a sequence lowercase omega plus s is encountered that is not in the table. Open paren so that the code must be added to it, close paren, but the next available code in the table is 2 to the power of P, open paren, the first code requiring P plus 1 bits, close paren, period. The encoder emits the code for lowercase omega at width p since that code does not require p plus 1 bits comma and then increases the code width so that the next code emitted is p plus 1 bits wide the decoder is always one code behind the encoder in building the table so when it sees the code for omega it generates an entry for code 2 to the power of p minus 1 since this is the point where the encoder increases the code width the decoder must increase the width here as well, dash dash at the point where it generates the largest code that fits in p bits. Unfortunately, some early implementations of the encoding algorithm increase the code width and then emit omega, lowercase omega, at the new width instead of the old width, so that 
to the decoder, it looks like the width changes one code too early. This is called early change. It caused so much confusion that Adobe now allows both versions in PDF files, but includes an explicit flag in the header of each LZW compressed stream to indicate whether early change is being used. Of the graphics file formats that support LZW compression, TIFF uses early change, while GIF and most others don't. When the table is cleared in response to a clear code, both encoder and decoder change the code width after the clear code back to the initial code width, starting with the code immediately following the clear code. I'm going to say that again because it didn't quite make sense to me. When the table is cleared in response to a clear code, both encoder and decoder change the code width after the clear code back to the initial code width, comma, starting with the code immediately following the clear code. Um, still kind of doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to say it one more time, and then I'm just going to move on. When the table is cleared in response to a clear code, comma, both encoder and decoder change the code width after the clear code back to the initial code width, starting with code immediately following the clear code. Um, I think I don't understand this because um, code is being used in a singular and plural uh, verbiage in here. So the last uh, one of the usages, yeah, I, I think that's what's going on, kind of like deer versus deer, right? A single deer versus multiple deer. I think that's part of the problem. Also, as I'm reading this sentence, I'm not sure how to group and chunk the different ideas that are being strung together here. And if I don't correctly see the boundaries between the different ideas when I'm stringing them together, uh, I kind of misinterpret the stream, kind of like how they're talking about um, if you have early change, then uh, your uh, stream of data could be misinterpreted. So I think I'm misinterpreting the stream of data here, but I, I just got to keep on going. Packing order. Since the codes emitted typically do not fall on byte boundaries, the encoder and decoder must agree on how codes are packed into bytes. The two common methods are LSB first, within quotations, least significant bit first, and MSB first, within quotations, most significant bit first. In LSB first packing, the code is al aligned so that the least significant bit of the code falls on the least significant bit of the first stream byte. And if the code has more than eight bits, the high order bits left over are aligned with the least significant bits of the next byte. Further codes are packed with LSB going into the next significant bit, but not yet used in the current stream stream byte, Pro proceeding into further bytes as necessary. MSB first packing aligns the first code so that its most significant bit falls in the MSB of the first stream byte, with overflow aligned with the MSB of the next byte. Further codes are written with MSB going into the most significant bit not yet used in the current stream byte. GIF files use LSB first packing order. TIFF files and PDF files use MSB first packing order. Example. The following example illustrates the LZW algorithm in action, showing the status of the output and the dictionary at every stage, both in encoding and decoding the data. This example has been constructed to give reasonable compression on a very short message. In real text data, repetition is generally less pronounced, so longer input streams are typically necessary before the compression builds up efficiency. The plain text to be encoded from an alphabet using only the capital letters is to be or not to be or to be or not. Hashtag. The hash is a marker to show that the end of the message has been reached, there are thus 26 symbols in the plain text alphabet and 26 capital letters, A through Z. And the pound character represents a stop code. We arbitrarily assign these, the values 1 through 26 for the letters and 0 for pound. Most flavors of LZW would put the stop code after the data alphabet 
but nothing in the basic algorithm requires that. The encoder and decoder only have to agree what that value is. A computer renders these strings of bits. Five bit codes are needed to give sufficient combinations to encompass this set of 27 values. The dictionary is initialized with these 27 values. As the dictionary grows, the codes must grow in width to accommodate the additional values. A 5-bit code gives 2 to the power of 5 equals 32 possible combinations of bits. So when the 33rd dictionary word is created, the algorithm must switch at that point from 5-bit strings to 6-bit strings for all code values, including those previously output with only 5 bits. Note that since the all zero code, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so five zeros in a row, is used, and is labeled zero within quotation marks. The 33rd dictionary entry is labeled 32. Previously generated output is not affected by the code with change, but once a six bit value is generated in the dictionary, it could conceivably be the next code emitted. So the width for subsequent outputs shifts to six bits to accommodate that. The initial dictionary then consists of the following entries. Symbol, binary, and decimal, those are our three columns. We have hash, which is all zeros, decimal zero, uh, symbol A, uh, binary one, decimal one, symbol B, one zero binary, decimal two, symbol C, uh, one one, two set bits, which is decimal three, um, and it looks like um, it's just counting up. And let's go through all these symbols. But yeah, it looks like it's counting up in binary all the way to 26. Um, and it is using uh, five bits. Yeah, it's using five bits and counting all the way up to 26 in binary. Um, really quick, quick, quick check on my calculator. Uh, I typed in the last entry within that table. And the binary indeed uh, does match decimal 26. Um, now this is just their arbitrary, it's arbitrarily matching. This, this data set here, it arbitrarily, the binary matches the decimal values 1 through 26. I don't think that has to be the case. I, I could be wrong. Um, let's just keep going. Encoding. Buffer input characters in the sequence lowercase omega until lowercase omega plus next character is not in the dictionary. Emit the code for lowercase omega and add lowercase omega plus next character to the dictionary. Start buffering again with the next character. To The string to be encoded is to be or not to be, be or to be or not hashtag, and hashtag indicates the end of the string, so it's like a null terminator. Uh, the table below, current sequence, next care, output is divided into two sub-columns, code and bits, extended dictionary column and comments column. First record, null, next care, t, all other columns, blank. Second row, current sequence, t, next care, zero, output, codes and bits 20 and binary 10100 extended dictionary 27 colon to comments 27 equals first available code after 0 through 26 third record current sequence o next care b output code and bits 15 0 1 1 1 1 extended dictionary 28 ob Fourth record, current sequence B, next care E, output code and bits 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, extended dictionary 29, colon BE. There's no comments. Fifth entry, current sequence E, next care O, output code and bits 5, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, extended dictionary 30, E, O, no comments. And this is the sixth record, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, sixth record. The current sequence is O, next care, R, output code and bits, 15, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, extended dictionary, 31, O, R. 
Seventh entry, current sequence, R. Next character, N. Output code in bits, 18. 10010, extended dictionary, 32, RN. Comments, 32 requires 6 bits, so for next output, use 6 bits. So once the code uh, requires 6 bits, uh, we have to switch to 6 bits for everything, I believe. Eighth record, we have current sequence N, next character O, output code and bits, 14, 001110, 33, and NO in the extended dictionary. The ninth record, current sequence O, next character T, output code and bits, 15, 001111, extended dictionary, 34, OT. And I've lost my place. Um, current sequence is T, next character T, output code and bits, 20. And the bits are 0101110. The extended dictionary is 35 and TT. 11th record, current sequence TO, next character B. Output code and bits 27011011. Extended dictionary 36 TOB. 12th record, current sequence, BE, next care, O, output code in bits, 29, 011101, extended dictionary, 37, BEO. 13th entry, current sequence, 0, so it's OR, next character, T, output code and bits, 31, 011, 111, so five ones in a row. Extended dictionary 38, O, R, T. 14th record, current sequence T, O, B. Next character E, output code and bits 36, 100, 100. Extended dictionary 39, T, O, B, E. 15th record, current sequence E. E O next character R output code in bits 30 0 1 1 1 1 0 extended dictionary 40 E O R 16th record current sequence R N next care O output and code bits 32 1 0 0 0 0 0 so five zeros in a row before a after a one so one and then five zeros. Extended dictionary, 41 R N O. 17th entry, current sequence, O T. Next character, pound or the end of string character, our null terminator. Output code in bits, 34. The bits are one zero 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 one zero. Comments, Pound stops the algorithm, sends the current sequence. 18th record, current sequence, there is nothing. Next character, there's nothing. The output code and bits, we have zero for the code, and the bits is just a string of nothing but zeros. The comment is and stops the code. Oh, and stop the code. No, and the stop code, sorry. And the stop code. Unencoded length equals 25 symbols multiplied by 5 bits per symbol equals 125 bits. Encoded length equals 6 codes multiplied by 5 bits per code plus 11 codes multiplied by 6 bits per code equals 96 bits. Using LZW has saved 29 bits out of 125, reducing the message by more than 23%. If the message were longer, then the dictionary word words would begin to represent longer and longer sections of text, sending repeated words very compactly. Decoding. To decode an LZW compressed archive, one needs to know in advance the initial dictionary used, 
but additional entries can be reconstructed as they are always simply concatenations of previous entries. With our table, we have four main columns, input, output sequence, new dictionary entry, and comments. The column input is subdivided into bits and codes, and the column new dictionary entry is subdivided into full and conjecture. The first record, input, bits 10100, zero, zero. the code is 20. Output sequence T, new dictionary entry, full is blank, conjecture is 27 colon T question mark. Second entry, input bits 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. The code is 15, output sequence 0. New dictionary entry, full 20, 27 TO, conjecture 28 O question mark. The third entry, the third record, input bits. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. code 2, output sequence B, new dictionary entry, full 28, 0, B, conjecture 29, B, question mark. Input, bits and code, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. the code is 5, output sequence E, new dictionary entry, 29, B E conjecture is 30 and E question mark. Fifth entry input bits and code. The bits are 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. The code is 15. The output sequence is O. New dictionary entry full is 30. E O conjecture is 31. O question mark. The sixth entry. The bits and code is 10010. The code is 18. Output sequence R. New dictionary entry. Full 31. OR. Conjecture 32. R question mark. The comments. Created code 31. Last to fit in 5 bits. The seventh entry. The input bits and code. 001110, so that's two zeros, three ones, and then a zero. The code is 14, the output sequence is N. New dictionary entry, full 32, RN, conjecture 33, and question mark. So start reading input at six bits, that's the comment. The eighth record, the bits are 001111, code, 15. Output sequence O. New dictionary entry, full 33 and O. Conjecture 34 O question mark. Ninth entry, the bits are 0, 01 0, 01 0, 00. The code is 20. The output sequence is T. The new dictionary entry, full, is 34 O T. The conjecture is 35T question mark. The tenth record, the bits are 011011, code 27, output sequence TO, new dictionary entry full, 35TT, the conjecture 36TO question mark. The eleventh record, the bits are 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. code 29, output sequence BE, new dictionary entry, full 36 TOB, the conjecture 37 BE question mark, there is a comment, it says 36 equals TO plus for symbol B of, I think the comment goes down into the next record. So I'll just say the next line, next coded sequence received BE. Uh, I, I could be wrong here, I don't know. 
Uh, so the full comment, if we read both lines of both records, 36 equals TO plus first symbol B of next coded sequence received BE. Twelfth record, the bits are 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So 0 and then 5 ones. The code is 31. The output sequence is OR. The new dictionary entry full is 37 BEO. The conjecture 38 OR question mark. 13th record, the bits are 0, 1, 1, sorry, my bad. The 13th record, the bits are 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. The code is 36. The output sequence is TOB. New dictionary entry, full 38, 0, RT. The conjecture, 39, colon, TOB, question mark. The 14th record, the bits are 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. The code is 30. The output sequence is EO. New dictionary entry, full and conjecture, 39, colon, T-O-B-E. Oh, sorry, that was the full, and the conjecture is 40, EO, question mark. 15th record, it's a 1 followed by 5 zeros. The code is 32. The output sequence is RN. New dictionary entry, full, 40 EOR. Conjecture, 41 RN, question mark. 16th entry, we have the bits 1, followed by three zeros, 1, and then a 0. The code is 34. The output sequence is OT. New dictionary entry, full, 41 RNO. And the conjecture 42 OT question mark. And the index, uh, sorry, the last record uh, is 17. Its bits are all zero. The code is zero. And the output sequence is just a hashtag, which is the end of string code, I believe. Or the end, it's, it's some type of terminator sequence. And then the last. Uh, columns, the full and conjecture columns, those are blank, and the comments column is also blank here. At each stage, the decoder receives a code X. It looks up X in the table and outputs the sequence X it codes, and it conjectures X plus question mark as the entry the encoder just added. Because the encoder emitted X for X precisely because X plus x question mark was not in the table, the encoder goes ahead and adds it. But what is the missing letter? Question mark. It is the first letter in the sequence coded by the next code Z that the decoder receives. So the decoder looks up Z, decodes it into the sequence lowercase omega, and takes the first letter Z and tacks it onto the end of x as the next dictionary entry. And I might have to look this up because we have two different sized X's and I have no clue what this like squashed on the X axis X is. Looking it up, that character that looks like an X is called the letter Chi. And it looks like it is a lowercase when I'm looking up the documentation on Wikipedia. Uh, so uppercase Chi looks like looks like an X and lowercase just looks like a X that is squashed and that is um, I'm gonna tell you what that's uh, not very I don't know maybe I don't know maybe once you get used to it and you could maybe the dis differences are more blatantly obvious I, d I don't know uh, let's just keep going all right looks like this letter, even though it's spelled C-H-I, is pronounced Chi, which is why I hate English. Uh, it's, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, doesn't really matter too much. It just matters for the purpose of communicating here. Um, 
Let's not uh, judge people's intelligence by their collection of trivia and their ability to spell and pronounce things correctly. This works as long as the codes received are in the decoder's dictionary so that they can be decoded into sequences. What happens if the decoder receives a code Z that is not yet in the dictionary? Since the decoder is always just one code behind the encoder, Z can be in the encoder's dictionary only if the encoder just generated it. When emitting the previous code, I believe this is capital Q for lowercase Q. Thus, Z codes sum lowercase omega. What is lowercase Q plus question mark? And the decoder can determine the unknown characters as follows. The decoder sees uppercase Q and then Z, and where Q codes the sequence lowercase Q and Z codes some unknown sequence lowercase omega. Two, the decoder knows that the encoder just added Z as a code for lowercase chi plus some unknown character C, so lowercase omega equals lowercase chi plus C. Three, since C is the first character in the input stream after lowercase chi, and since lowercase omega is the string appearing immediately after lowercase chi, C must be the first character of the sequence lowercase omega. 4. Since lowercase chi is an initial substring of lowercase omega, C must also be the first character of lowercase omega. 5. So even though the Z code is not in the table, the decoder is able to infer the unknown sequence and adds lowercase chi plus the first character of lowercase chi to the table as the value of Z. The situation occurs whenever the encoder encounters input of the form CSCSC, where C is a single character, S is a string, and CS is already in the dictionary, but CSC is not. The encoder emits the code for CS, putting a new code for CSC into the dictionary. Next, it sees CSC in the input, starting at the second C of CSCSC, and emits the new code it just inserted. The argument above shows that whenever the decoder receives a code not in its dictionary, the situation must look like this. Although input of form CSCSC might seem unlikely, this pattern is fairly common when the input stream is characterized by significant repetition. In particular, long strings of a single character, which are common in the kinds of images LZW is often used to encode, repeatedly generate patterns of this sort. Further coding. The simple scheme described above focuses on the LZW algorithm itself. Many applications apply further encoding to the sequence of output symbols. Some package the coded stream as printable characters using some form of binary to text encoding. This increases the encoded length and decreases the compression rate. Conversely, increased compression can often be achieved with an adaptive entropy encoder. Such a coder estimates the probability distribution for the value of the next symbol based on the observed frequencies of values so far. A standard entropy encoding, such as Huffman coding or arithmetic encoding, then uses shorter codes for values with higher probabilities. Uses. LZW compression became the first widely used universal data compression method on computers. A large English text file can typically be compressed via LZW to about half its original size. LZW was used in the public domain program Compress, which became a more or less standard utility in Unix systems around 1986 and has since disappeared from many distributions, both because it infringed the LZW patent and because GZIP produced better compression ratios using the LZ77-based deflate algorithm. But as of 2008, at least free BSD includes both Compress and Uncompress as part of the distribution. Several other popular compressed utilities also used LZW or closely related methods. 
LZW became very widely used when it became part of the GIF image format in 1987. It may also optionally be used in TIFF and PDF files. Although LZW is widely available in Adobe Acrobat software, Acrobat by default uses Deflate for most text and color table based image data in PDF files. Patents, main article, colon, graphics interchange format, section Unisys, and LZW patent enforcement. Various patents have been issued in the United States and other countries for LZW and similar algorithms. LZ78 was covered by U.S. patent 4,000, 4, sorry, 4,000,000. 464,650 by Lempel, Ziv, Khan, and Eastman, assigned to Sperry Corporation. Later, Unisys Corporation filed on August 10, 1981. Two U.S. patents were issued for the LZW algorithm. U.S. patent 4,814,700 by Victor S. Miller and Mark N. Wegman, Wegman, I don't know, and assigned to IBM, originally filed on June 1st, 1983, and U.S. Patent 4,558,302 by Welch, assigned to Sperry Corporation, later Unisys Corporation, filed on June 20th, 1983. In addition to the above patents, Welch's 1983 patent also includes citations to several other patents that influenced it, including two 1980 Japanese patents, JP9343880A and JP 17790880 from NEC's Jun Kanatsu, US patent 4,021,782. Nineteen seventy four from John S. Horning, I don't know, US patent four million three hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and fifty one, nineteen seventy seven from Klaus E. Holtz and a nineteen eighty one German patent DE one nine eight one three one one eight six seven six from Carl Eckhart Heinz. In 1993 through 94, and again in 1999, Unisys Corporation received widespread condemnation when it attempted to enforce licensing fees for LZW in GIF images. The 1993 to 1994 Unisys uh, CompuServe, CompuServe being the creator of the GIF format controversy, engendered a Usenet group comp.graphics discussion thoughts on a GIF replacement file format, which in turn fostered an email exchange that eventually accumulated in the creation of the patent unencumbered portable networks graphics PNG file format in 1995. Unisys's US patent on the LZW algorithm expired on June 20th, 2003, 20 years after it had been filed. Patents that had been filed in the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and Canada all expired in 2004, likewise 20 years after they had been filed. I thought patents were 10 years, not 20. Um, I'm going to look that up. All right, my mistake. Utility patents do last for 20 years, not 10, um, which is in line with what this article says. Um, that's cool, because I just filed two patents, and yeah, okay, cool. Variants. LZMW, 1985, by V. Miller M. Weigman. V. Miller and M. Weigman searches input for the longest string already in the dictionary, the current match, adds the concatenation of the previous match with the current match to the dictionary. Dictionary entries thus grow more rapidly, but the scheme is much more complicated to implement. Miller and Weigman also suggest deleting low-frequency entries from the dictionary when the dictionary fills up. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So rather than having your dictionary uh, filled up and needing to clear the entire dictionary and rebuild it um, after the compression becomes inefficient, uh, what they're saying is that 
you fill up the dictionary, and then if there's with low frequency stuff, you just toss that and you keep on building up your dictionary. Um, but I could see why that would be much more complicated. LZAP, 1988 by James Storer, modification of LZMW, instead of adding just the concatenation of the previous match with the current match to the dictionary, add the concatenations of the previous match with each initial substring of the current match. AP stands for all prefixes. For example, if the previous match is wiki and the current match is pedia, then LZAP encoder adds five new sequences to the dictionary. So it adds W-I-K-I-P, W-I-K-I-P-E, W-I-K-I-P-E-D, W-I-K-I-P-E-D-I, and W-I-K-I-P-E-D-I-A, where the LM, where the LZMW encoder adds only one sequence, Wikipedia. This eliminates some of the complexity of LZMW at the price of adding more dictionary entries. Final bullet point, LZWL is a syllable-based variant of LZW. Okay, so that makes sense, especially for um, uh, languages that always have a vowel and a consonant together. Um, that would make sense to have a syllable variant. See also LZ77 and LZ78, LZMA, Lempelziv store and some type of Russian name I can't pronounce, S-Z-Y-M-A-N-S-K-I, LZJB, Context-free weighting, discrete cosine transform, DCT, and lossy compression algorithm used in JPEG and MPEG coding standards. References, I'm going to skip. I don't think it adds any extra value. Um, and external links, I am also going to skip. Well, actually, you know what? External links look kind of important, and there's not too many of them. So what do we have? We have Rosetta code, wiki algorithm in various languages. U.S. Patent 4,558,302, Terry A. Welch, High Speed Data Compression and Decompression Apparatus and Method, Sharp LZW, C Sharp Open Source Implementation, MIT Open Courseware, Lecture Including LZW Algorithm, Mark Nelson, LZW Data Compression on Dr. Dobbs Journal, October 1989. So uh, actually that Open Courseware link looks pretty cool. Uh, MIT Open Courseware usually has some pretty good videos, so I, I'm assuming this is a video. So if I open this in a new tab really quick, oh, not found. I guess I'll have to go Google for that, see if I can find it. But that's the end of um, our video on uh, Lempels of Welch. Um, there are some other things like this table on data compression methods, but I think that it is not a very good use of time just to say all of these random things that I'm not going to remember. So I'm going to skip this table as well. And that is the end of the Wikipedia article on Lempels of Welch.